At the Cleft Collective, we collect blood and lip or palate tissue left over from surgery from the children who are taking part in the study, and saliva from their parents and siblings, as well as blood from the umbilical cord. We use these biological samples to study the DNA of our participants, which will help us find out more about the genetic and non-genetic causes of cleft lip and palate. DNA is a long molecule that acts like a set of instructions for making a person. It is split into smaller sections called genes. These explain how to make one small part of you, such as the colour of your eyes. There can be several versions of a single gene, which give different instructions. One might cause a person to have blue eyes, another might cause them to have brown eyes. A person has two copies of each gene, one from their mother and one from their father. We compare the genes of children born with a cleft to the genes of their parents and siblings without a cleft to find out which genes might be involved in the development of a cleft. Genes are not the only thing that cause a cleft. Parents taking part in our study tell us about their diets, lifestyles and experiences around the time of pregnancy. We use this information to study the non-genetic factors that might increase the chance of a cleft. We can think of the chance of getting a cleft as being a jar. When a person's jar fills up to the top, they get a cleft, and if the jar doesn't fill up, they don't. The genes that increase the chance of getting a cleft are these marbles that sit at the bottom of the jar. Some people have more marbles than others, but very few people have so many marbles that the jar fills up completely. The things a baby experiences as it grows in the womb are these triangular blocks. They fall into the jar during early pregnancy. For some people, the marbles, genetic factors, and triangular blocks, non-genetic factors, will fill up the jar and they'll develop a cleft. In the Cleft Collective, we want to find out more about what's going into the jar. If we knew the things, both genetic and non-genetic, that caused clefts, we might be able to suggest ways to remove some of the triangular blocks to reduce the chance of a cleft developing. For example, if we find that having low levels of a certain vitamin is one of the things that causes clefts, then we'll be able to suggest that pregnant women take that vitamin as a supplement. As well as looking at the causes of clefts, we're also using genetic data to tell us about the causes of other characteristics in children born with a cleft, like struggling at school, being unhappy and having problems with speech. This will help us understand how genes affect these things and how non-genetic factors contribute to and if we know that, we might be able to predict which children born with a cleft are likely to need extra support from their healthcare providers and schools. If you'd like to find out more or get in touch, you can visit us at www.bristol.ac.uk forward slash cleft dash collective or you can visit our Facebook page or tweet us at cleft collective. Thank you for watching.